Okay. So, okay. So we um we have gone ahead and formatted our flash drive. We've installed our portable app platform, and now we're going to go ahead and install portable virtual box. So I'm in my um I'm in my flash drive or wherever you stored your files. Um, in my virtual box folder, and then double and I'm going to double click uh, portable app underscore virtual box. Okay, now this is going to say to extract uh, here to VirtualBox. Okay, so I'm going to click Extract. Okay, so this gave me a new folder here for Portable VirtualBox. Uh, at this point, I can go ahead and delete this application. Okay, because it was just an archive. I'm going to go to my portable virtual box folder and I'm going to click portable virtual box. Okay, so basically what this application is, is this application is going to download virtual box and install it, or not install it, but um, basically take all the files and put them into a usable portable form uh, on my flash drive or wherever on your computer that that you're storing. Okay, so I click Extract Files for 32-bit System, and then I click Download Installation Files Virtual Box. Okay, now it's going to download. You can check the status uh, down at the bottom here. It's going to take a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. Okay, so the um, download is almost complete here. Uh, and once it is complete, um, you see the status of the change. Okay, so ready with download. Uh, we can see the file has been stored in this path uh, on our flash drive. <coughs> Make sure once again that you've clicked extract files for 32 bit system and click OK. Okay, continue to watch the status info here. Okay, so it's going to say please wait, copy any files. Uh, this can also take quite a while. <coughs> okay, so we're still waiting for it to copy the files here. Um, it gives little or no warning once it completes the installation. The installation box just kind of disappears. And you'll notice a few little hiccups just like the one we just had. Okay, so uh, basically it's finished. Uh, you will see this um, info box here. It says, please start VirtualBox again so that all paths can be adapted. Actually, you're going to start VirtualBox, shut it down, and then start it one more time. Uh, and it will basically adjust the paths to work off of your flash drive by doing that. If you don't do that, um, what will happen is it will start to store things on your uh, main hard drive. And then if you try to use your flash drive elsewhere, it won't. So we're going to go ahead and start VirtualBox, or it will start up on its own. Okay, so once it starts, we're just going to go ahead and uh, click OK here. Don't actually download anything. Okay, so we have VirtualBox here. We're going to go ahead and shut it down. And then we're going to restart uh, Portable VirtualBox. Okay, so the same executable it used before is now portable virtual box instead. Okay, so it's going to go ahead and start up here. Okay. So this is VirtualBox, so let's go ahead and create our virtual computer. 
because we're going to click new. It says welcome to new machine wizard. Okay, so we're going to call this uh, Ubuntu. Okay, we leave it as Linux and version is Ubuntu. Click next. Okay, memory is a really important decision here. Okay, it's set to 512 megabytes to start. Uh, your computer has two gigabytes at least if you're running Windows 7. Uh, so we don't want to go up to half, right? Which would be 1,024 megabytes or one gigabyte. Okay, we want to go a little less than half. Okay, so let's go to 900 megabytes. Now, if your computer starts to have problems, if you can't run under other things, if you if you're trying to, you probably shouldn't run under things while you're uh, running VirtualBox. But if uh, you start to have problems with your computer, you want to come back in and maybe reduce this down towards 512 megabytes. Don't go less than 512 megabytes. Though. And I'll show you where you can uh, adjust that later on. Click next. We're going to actually use. It says to for boot hard disk. Okay, so we're going to select our virtual hard disk. Uh, we're not going to create a new one in this case. We're going to use an existing one. So go ahead and click the file folder there. Uh, and we're going to go back to our flash drive. And go into VirtualBox. And we're going to choose Ubuntu.vdi. Okay, so that's our virtual hard disk right there. I'm going to click Next and Finish. Okay, so we have our, our virtual computer all set up. Um, if we wanted to change the settings, we could right click and click settings. And this screen is where you can change absolutely everything about the computer. You can change the amount of RAM, which is memory, of course. You can change the hard drive. You can change what's in their CD drive. All, everything can be done from the screen. Okay, so we're going to click cancel out of here for now. And we're going to fire up our computer. So we'll click start. Uh, now this might jump off of the area of the video. Um, all the messages just click do not show again and click OK. Okay, grub loading, that's the bootloader for um, Ubuntu or Zubuntu. Okay, we're going to go ahead and click Do Not Show Again. Click OK. Just every message that comes up, Do Not Show Again. Click OK. You see our little mouse? That's the Zubuntu uh, symbol for it loading. Okay, so we're just going to let the video run here so you get kind of a realistic view of how long this is going to take to, um, to start up. You'll notice this icon here is a, this is your um, the virtual computer accessing your virtual hard drive, which is just a file on your flash drive, of course. Okay, so we were, here we have this Ubuntu uh, start screen. And if you see this, you know you had a bit of success. But you don't want to do anything as it's starting up. You just want to kind of let it do its thing. Um, just kind of let it run. Even if it blank, screen blanks like this, it's just doing some things in the background. Okay, so we have our login screen at this point, and we're going to click uh, Zubuntu. Okay, and I've noticed that this happens when you click that. Okay, and just give it a second, it should pop open. Um, 
understand the layout correctly. Okay, there we go. The password is reverse, R-E-V-E-R-S-E, -E -E, reverse, and click login. Okay, so there's Ubuntu starting up here. Um, you can adjust the size of your screen and it should work out just fine. Um, it should redraw itself uh, to whatever size you set it at. Okay, so now you see um, you see the screen cart starting to come up here. Okay, now for today we're just going to ignore everything else. So we've successfully installed the virtual machine. We have it up and running, you can see by the desktop. Uh, and we're just going to go through the shutdown procedure here. So what you want to do, um, it, the, running something off a flash drive, like if you're running it off a flash drive, it, things become a little less stable than they would be if they were running off your hard drive. So it's very important the way that you exit out of this. Um, you want to don't just don't pull your flash drive out. Don't just shut down the virtual machine. You have to shut down from inside the operating system. So we're going to go ahead and click quit, and we're going to click shut down. Okay. So now we can see um, the screen's going to pop around a little bit. Okay, so this is uh, Zubuntu shutting itself down. Okay, so it's powered off. Okay, so we've successfully installed the virtual machine. We have logged in, we've shut down. Now I'm going to close out of VirtualBox and I am going to eject my uh, flash drive. So you notice it's exiting VirtualBox. Well, once VirtualBox is exited, I'm going to go down. Now I could use the system tray, but we can also just right click on your D drive. You know, not your D drive maybe, but your flash drive, whatever flash drive you're using, and click eject. Okay, and that will allow you to safely remove your flash drive. Okay, so now you can safely remove. Uh, good luck.